All right. All right. Well, thank you everyone for being here today. Um, Suzanne and I both work in the University Career Center here, and we're very excited to have uh, Mr. Josh Hathaway, who is an editor at Boeing in Huntsville, Alabama. He has 20 plus years of experience in technical writing, and Josh is a college friend of mine. I've known him for a number of years and really appreciate him coming to share his expertise and all of the things he knows about technical writing. So I'm going to mute myself here and Josh, turn it over to you. Students, if you have questions, feel free to unmute and ask them or you can put them in the chat and see Sam and I will facilitate those as Josh presents. So once again, Mr. Josh Hathaway. Thanks so much, friends. Thank you, Jay. It is a real pleasure to be here uh, with you. Thank you, UNC Charlotte. This is, this is, this is fantastic. Um, as, as Jay mentioned, uh, my name is Josh Hathaway. Um, Jay and I have known each other for a very long time, um, perhaps longer than some of you have been alive. Um, I am um, I'm in Huntsville, Alabama. I give you a little bit of background. Who am I and, and what do I do all day? Um, I got my degree in communications uh, with an emphasis in public relations from the University of Alabama. Uh, that's Muscle Shoals area, Florence, Alabama. For those of you who might be music fans, you might know a little bit about the Shoals. My first job out of college was in the world of radio as a news anchor. I spent a little bit of time actually hosting a morning show about business. Um, I called it playing radio. What I know about the business world couldn't fill a thimble, but we didn't let that stop me. And so I did that for a while. And I also got to dabble in sports, which was a lot of fun. And technical writing was not the dream. It was not the plan when I was in college. But to quote the great John Lennon, life's what happens while you're busy making other plans. So I did radio for about six months. And then I got an opportunity with the Boeing Company in October of 2000. And I have been there ever since. Um, now, during my time with Boeing, I've worked on various programs. I've worked in different functions, most if not all of them in the world of technical writing or tech writing adjacent, if you will. Um, I worked on the International Space Station program, um, Space Launch Systems, which is, right, Space Station is actually still active. Um, Space Launch Systems, um, if you are at all sci-tech space interested this has been a long long going program and they're actually doing testing um at stennis which is in um, mississippi louisiana and down at the cape in florida um i worked in the product standards office which wouldn't mean much to anybody but it was our largest um stakeholder, if you will, was Boeing commercial airplanes. Um, so, you know, Boeing is probably most widely known as a maker of airplanes. It's the largest exporter in the United States, but it does things with military, um, commercial space, all of these different things. This was the one time where I was actually working with folks who put parts on planes that any of us have, have have flown on and I am now working on the missile defense program. Um, so my my career in technical writing has been with one company, one that's on the cutting edge of um, multiple technology and remains the largest exporter in the US. And that makes me almost a unicorn. It is very rare. It's not unprecedented, but for somebody to be with the same company for this long is is unlikely. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Uh, your mileage may vary, but um, I, I've done that. And yet the job that I've got today, what I'm doing right now is not the same as what I did when I walked in straight out of, out of UNA. And within that technical writing doesn't look the same for every company in every industry. Um, I'm gonna share a little bit about what it's looked like for me, but within what I do, I have colleagues who have come and gone, friends who have done some of this and they work in other areas um, or 
they work in technical writing, but it looks a little different from them. I can tell you a little bit about that and, and conversations that, that we've had. But one thing that I can share, and this makes, this has been, this has been good news for me. Um, there continues to be a demand for this profession. Um, I don't know how this happened. You know, um, we all know about email spam and unsolicited, sometimes unwanted messages from different um, social media outlets and whatnot. I routinely get solicitations through email inform me of opening openings within the tech writer world um, here in Huntsville and beyond. And for those of you who've never heard of Huntsville, I'm not going to be the Chamber of Commerce, but I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about it. We're the second largest city in Alabama, and it is projected on multiple fronts that we will overtake Birmingham with in the next few years as the largest city. Um, we've got Redstone Arsenal here. Um, we've got Boeing, Northrop Grumman. NASA is here, you know, and when I was working on station, um, SLS, which is building a gigantic gigantic rocket to go back to the moon and perhaps beyond. Um, Toyota and Nissan are here. Facebook's actually coming here. Now, we're not going to be Facebook's number one hub, but this is very much a tech, a high tech community. And, you know, you talk about high tech, you're usually going to hear about, you know, Silicon Valley or Seattle, which is where Boeing started its um where it, where it originated and you got Nintendo and Microsoft and whatnot out there. Huntsville is oddly enough, a, a player in that. And so I see frequently companies that are here, some that I've heard of, some that I haven't, that are looking for people um, to work within this discipline. It's not recession proof, a recession proof, but it is a discipline that, that continues to offer um, opportunities. So, you know, what is technical writing? I am not going to put up a PowerPoint slide and give you a um, tech writing 101 definition. I'll tell you a little bit what it's been like for me. And I don't know if this is going to make, you know, if this is the answer you guys want, but I'll tell you what it's been for me. It's very much, it's a lot less about writing and it's more about editing and publishing. <clears throat> very little of my day is spent writing anything. Um, there was a time when companies hired writers to do that to, you know, write manuals and documents, um, documentation, you know, you guys go out, you buy a new iPhone or, um, what, you know, iPad, whatever, whatever the catch device is. And used to come with all these manuals written in 37 languages, only one of which purported to be English until you actually had to read the thing and try and make it understand understandable to help you do what you were doing. Um, that's not, that's not the way it works often. Now. Um, a lot of what I do is, you know, there are a number of reasons for that. And I, I can circle back to it if you want bottom line money. Um, but, uh, a lot of what I do is working with subject matter experts, um, engineers, um, engineers who do unspeakably terrible things to the English language um, when they're asked to write a technical document. And your job is to learn to speak engineering. And, you know, I. I never thought that I would learn to speak it as well as I do when I walked in 20 some odd years ago. Uh, but to learn to take that and, and um, to help it to help it be readable, uh, to edit it for that, as well as to um, have it meet certain publishing standards, which can come from different contracts, from your customer, um, from within your own company, uh, et cetera. You may not, and, and quite likely won't do authorship, but you'll you'll do a lot of editing and coordinating with your with your technical expert. And I'll pause here for a, a quick story. Um, I got a call out of the blue yesterday uh, from someone I haven't spoken to in in ten some odd years. Someone from my days on space station, which was my first gig with Boeing. Um, 
he has, in addition to his work as a test engineer, technical lead, software, software that is keeping the space station as we speak, flying in orbit, um, sustaining human life and, and doing any number of different experiments. He also now has to be the book boss. He has to um, publish and collate all the technical data and, and deliver it to the customer along with making sure that the software works. He was getting to the end of his rope, you know, so I've been off that program, like I said, you know, eight to 10 years. And he was trying to remember how we used to do things back when I did it. And the tool that they're using is old. I won't get down deep into the minutia, but it's not even owned by the same company that was using that that designed it when I was there. It's changed hands a couple of times. It's the same tool with a different name, and um, neither one of us held out much hope when he called me. He's like, "Hey, uh, got a question?" I'm like, "All right, cool." You know, I didn't know what he was gonna ask me about, and he started telling me that you know his tech. I'm like, "Now, if you had asked me last Tuesday, would I remember anything that I did when I was on stage?" And I said, "Nah." Um, but he started um, asking me some questions and memory's a funny thing. I can remember fragments of class lectures from when I was at UNA. I can remember every lineup of some of my favorite bands or um, different sports teams. I can't remember, you know, what I ordered from Amazon last week or walking into one room or the other and, um, you know, what I ordered on my sandwich, but this was crazy. As we started talking, I could actually visualize the tool and the desktop and the layout and, and all of these different intricacies. And I was able to recall answers to most of his questions. And, and I never would have meant, I never would have believed it. Now, what does any of that mean for you? Not much other than you'll be surprised at how often things you're learning and doing now that you don't think will be any use to you at all can come back to you and how um, connections, people that you knew, you know, that you know right now, um, people that you'll know on your first job and you won't see them for eons and it can come back to you. Um, the tools will change, your coworkers and managers will change requirements, company letterhead will change, but the skill set is what has the value. That's what getting your education and work experience is going to do for you. You'll learn and develop these skills and it'll continue to provide value for you and for your employer, even though the deck is, is constantly shuffling. Um, talking a little bit about tools, you know, I talked about something that was a legacy system from a thousand years ago. Um, coming back into play. And, and since I've been at Boeing, like I said, you know, I've worked for different teams, for different organizations. Some of the tools have been common. Some of them have changed. Um, and I, I think something that we can all also relate to in just our everyday life, um, you know, whether you're um, an Android user, an iPhone, um, whatnot, the operating system, uh, that that whole uh, universe of technology, a lot of things remain the same, but over time there are changes, adaptations, um, and, and you can do everything you can to try and be as on top of it as possible. Some of it's going to change. Um, and, and, you know, on station, just to kind of circle back, what was on orbit when I first got there, that this, this fancy iPhone of mine has more computing power than what was keeping us keeping a, a laboratory, a laboratory on orbit in outer space. There's more computer power in this than was there at the time. And you know, I remember when I got there and they were telling me, I started laughing, like, you know, this is dinosaur stuff. But, you know, while it's been a long time since I've worked on that program, the 
the program existed long before I got there. And, and you know, right now, you guys, you know, you there and in, in Charlotte, you know, you can go two doors down next door and, you know, your phone breaks, the screen cracks, easy enough to go replace that. It's going to cost you some money. That sucks, but you can do it. You can't really do that on outer space. You got to fly, you got to fly that stuff up there. And so they have upgraded the hardware and, and whatnot, but trying to future proof yourself in the world of tech writing um, to learn all the tools that you could ever possibly know, not going to work, but there are certain skills and aptitudes that you can master now that it isn't going to matter whether you're using wax tablets, pen and paper printouts or um, tools that are online and interconnected around the world, that's going to be transferable. And, and those are the kinds of things that you're going to want to focus on and, and, and look at. Um, for me, what I use right now, and, and I'll forgive you if you roll your eyes at this, when I say Microsoft Office, now you're thinking, oh, great, I can already do that. I could tell you stories. I won't yet. If we've got time and you want to ask, there's a guy who makes probably two and a half times what I make right now, who can't get the table of contents function in Word, um, can't get the tables and figures or appendices to work, and he thinks he's kind of a big deal, and because he can't figure it out, he thinks that's somehow somebody else's problem, and by somebody else, he means me. Um, so while, you know, hearing me say, learn Microsoft office may make you roll your eyes. And I get that. Um, I don't just mean turning it on and being able to, you know, henpeck at, you know, seven words a minute, learning some of those higher functions. It, it matters. Um, and, and not everybody can do it. And there again, Microsoft office, you know, Microsoft, it's ubiquitous. It doesn't look the same today as it did when I started college, as when I started at Boeing. It's constantly um, evolving. Similarly, I had a friend who was working in another area of the defense industry and then was working in um, tourism and hospitality, sitting in the same desk yesterday that she was the next day. They got bought out. And the company that bought them out is actually a big player in that world. What they were not willing to do was pay for the Microsoft Office, Office licenses. And so overnight, they had to go from using Windows-based PCs to Mac, go from using Microsoft Office-based applications to the Google suite. Um, things like that can happen whether you're working for a large company a small business, working for yourself. So being adaptable, having familiarity with those different systems, that's helpful, it's useful, even if you don't know when or if there's going to be a change um, in the technology. Um, in my world, in, in the tech world, another thing that happens is because, again, I don't sit out, you know, I don't wake up one day and, what would I like to write today and sit down at my keyboard and start writing the great American novel or, or anything like that. It's highly technical documentation. And again, it's digital, not, you know, in the days. I used to publish documents that we would print out and they would come in giant. You know, some of them were large enough that they would be four, five, six Xerox boxes of printed out paper copy that I'd have to go through, that other people would. I would have to cart these boxes around different offices so that people could review them. Thank goodness that is not the way it happens as often. Um, now it's all online, but to make that happen, to make it possible for multiple people to review the same document, whether they're reviewing it for... Um, technical writing standpoint, um, you know, 
formatting and style and editorial matters or very technical um, engineering concepts. They want people to be able to review the document all at the same time. And so you've got um, different PDM suites, uh, product data management, and uh, Windchill makes several of those. That's what I use right now. Um, Boeing has started an initiative called 2CES, Second Century. Boeing's been around for over 100 years. They're trying to envision what they're going to need to not only remain competitive, but advance um, in the next century. They're looking at products that are um, one that's made by Siemens, and they're wanting to, um, you know, one of the things they're trying to get out of is a situation where, you know, I've worked with Boeing for 20 years. I'm over here on program A, and we use this group of tools. I get, um, you know, I get hired or, you know, they need me to go over and help this program. And it's a completely different batch of tools are trying to make things more common. And, and again, you can only do so much to stay up on that, but that's something else we do where it allows people to simultaneously review a document, um, access the data, provide comments, say, Hey, you misspelled your name. Hey, um, if we build this widget like this, it's going to blow up on the launch pad and, you know, kill everyone in a six mile radius. So maybe don't do that. Um, and, and those are things that if you get the opportunity to get your hands on, um, that would be, um, that would be goodness. And we'll talk a little bit about that as well, because um, one of the things, you know, you guys are um, in, in whatever stage of college, you know, underclassmen, upperclassmen, you're, you're making your way through it and you're facing, and this is where as ancient as I am, as my friend Jay is, here's a question that has not gone away. It's, it's the vicious circle. How do I get hired without experience? And how do I get experience without being hired? And I would love to tell you that I've cracked the Jumanji code on that and, and can make it simple. I can't exactly, but I can tell you some of the things that worked for me or things that I wish I had known, things that I wish that I had done uh, at the time. One of the principles of advertising for as old as that is and, and whether or not any of you want to go out into the world and, and try and sell stuff. Um, one of the principles of advertising is you create a problem and then you propose, you propose a solution and try and persuade us that our life can be so much better if we just buy, you know, that product or that service or, or whatever the thing is, you're going to be doing the same thing as you transition from your time there at UNC Charlotte into, um, applying for other jobs. You're going to stumble onto a job requisition. That's the problem. Company X. They need people. They need somebody. And you're going to try and convince them that you, yes, you are the solution to the problem they've got. You are going to make their life better and, and make everything work. How you do that is using your background, your education, and their experience. And acquiring those building blocks to do it. One of the things you're going to want to do is, and I don't know if I can or if I should, you know, you're going to have your, you're going to have your, um, your resume with, with all your related experience. You're going to go in for the interview. Different companies have different, um, interview systems. Boeing's got a distinct one. Um, I can't give you necessarily all the keys to it. But kind of at the gist of it, you're going to, the thing that will help you set yourself apart from your peers, your competition, you want to be able to, in that setting, say, I have done it, rather than I can do it. Um, and, and while you may not have, you know, coming out of UNC with, UNC Charlotte with, you know, whatever your degree is in. 
be it in communications, English, uh, poli sci, you know, and, and I, I choose some of those because I was totally a liberal arts nerd. Um, humanities, it never occurred to me to look into some of the disciplines that might require actual math. And yes, I say this is someone who's worked for Boeing for 21 years. Um, <clears throat> you're gonna have your you're gonna have your background, and you're gonna try and 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 sell yourself, and what you can do, and and how you can help, and a couple of things that you can do. And I'm guessing that I'm not gonna be the first person that said this to you, but internships, volunteer opportunities. Now, all right, that's great. I need an internship. What kind of internship? How is this gonna help me? What can I do with it? How do I find one? I found that kind of difficult myself. Um, circling back to when I was at UNA, um, you know, Huntsville, growing market. Wasn't necessarily all that big when I, when my family moved here a billion years ago, it's growing. Muscle Shoals is a beautiful area of Alabama, and I'm so fortunate and so glad that I got to go to school there and hang out there. It's not a hub of, of, of budding technology. And so in terms of finding internships and opportunities, there were some there, but there weren't a lot. And the internet existed then, but it wasn't quite as, <clears throat> we weren't quite as connected or online a world as as we are now <clears throat> when when I was there. And so I had to dig a little bit. Now, Charlotte, you know, I don't have to tell you this, Charlotte, Mecklenburg County, there's a lot going on there. I don't know all of it, but there are opportunities both on your campus right now and in the vicinity. And one of the things that I had to kind of shake my mind of back then is, you know, okay, yeah, there are these opportunities on campus. I can't wait to get out of college. I don't want to spend one more day on this campus. And so opportunities that were there on campus, I was kind of rolling my eyes at them. Like, yeah, yeah, it's not going to do me any good. Um, <clears throat> or, you know, I didn't think that I would wind up working at Boeing. Um, working in the space and defense industry. That wasn't, you know, that wasn't the dream, that wasn't the plan, that wasn't the goal. Um, and so opportunities that might have, um, you know, led me there. I, I probably would have rolled my eyes at, but one of the things that I've learned is that, again, the skill set, the, you know, the tools to a point wherever you want to take, you know, wherever you want to take yourself, um, whatever business or, or industry or, or function you might want to find yourself in writing, editing, those skills translate. And what you're going to want to do is separate yourself from others by having some of those, um, by, by having some of those experiences. Um, I may have buried the little lead a little bit, but I'm gonna tell you the moment that I think I landed the job at Boeing in my interview. I was probably midway through the conversation and you know, I was, I was excited about it. Um, at the time I was working in radio, which was a lot of fun. Um, fun fact, didn't pay worth a flip in 2000 does not pay any better today. Um, was barely above the poverty line then, may or may not be above the poverty line now. Um, and so I was looking for, you know, I, I was ready to sell out and, and, and make a little bit more money, have, you know, actual health insurance benefits. And so I'm in there and I'm interviewing and I'm halfway through it. And in my mind, I'm like, I'm dying. I'm like, I have not answered any of these questions well at all i am wasting my time and and i'm host and then they asked me and and you know not a huge reveal but i think it's something that again helped me with this specific career 
I was asked if I had any sort of experience <clears throat> doing editing based on you know, an external standard, <clears throat> um, other requirements, not, you know, would I write it this way, you know, you know, something more than I before E except after C. And there are a lot of different kinds of standards and, and you guys are dealing with some of this right now. You know, you're, you're in college, you're writing papers, <clears throat> MLA, APA, um, uh, different, different things like that. Um, within the world of journalism, uh, you know, you've got the Associated Press. The AP style guide is largely the Bible, but New York Times has a different style. And going back to a million years when, when uh, Jay Skipworth and I were in college, New York Times owned newspaper and, and media properties all around the country. They weren't just based in, in New York City. So their style mattered, Chicago Manual of Style. <clears throat> um, and, and one of the things that, you know, and then you've got um, government standards. A lot of them were adopted or written by the military. And, you know, here again, I'm not trying to sell any particular um, thing to you, but, um, you know, you may think, I don't, I don't want to go work for the military. I don't want to go work for the government. Fair enough their standards, the way they do things is, <clears throat> is, is commonplace in, in what other companies do. I've got a friend who works, um, has worked for a number of years for a healthcare nonprofit in, in Massachusetts. Some of what she does is reaching out to donors and, 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 and trying to get, um, contributions. Some of it's writing grant proposals. And some of those grant proposals are to um, private philanthropic uh, organizations and, and entities. Some of it's trying to get money from, yeah, the government, you know, federal, state, local. And there are requirements for the paperwork and, and what you submit. And so as you're continuing your education and thinking about where you might want to go and how you might want to apply your skills, being open to getting experience from organizations that are, you know, things that you're, you're interested in right now. Great. But being open to organizations and, um, and functions that are far outside your comfort zone far outside what you may want to do is, is, is something that's also really valuable. Um, <clears throat> Boeing has internships in a lot of different disciplines. A lot of companies do, some of them are paid. Um, if you get the chance to get a paid internship, highly recommend that. My internship was not paid. It was, um, it, it was chump labor. Um, but I went and worked for the Chamber of Commerce in the Shoals. Uh, and, and, but what it did, again, was they had me editing um, and, and looking over, you know, um, documentation that they were going to send out. You know, um, thinking right now to you on campus, I'm... I'm somewhat familiar with UNC Charlotte because my friend Jay's worked there for a while. I don't know everything about it. You know, campus newspaper, um, campus pub, campus publications. You know, I know through Jay. You know, he goes out and recruits different uh, companies to come and meet with students there on your campus to try and meet with you and match you up with potential employers and, and, and help you find jobs as, as you leave. Uh, there's also um, on your campus and, and every campus, they're recruiting students. They want the best, the brightest. They want a diverse population to come in and learn and, and be a part of the community. And there's so much communication that goes out and, and, there was a time when it was, again, it was printed, it was flyers, it was posters. Some of that still happens. A lot of it's online. Somebody still has to edit it. And whether or not you think about it or know it, 
I am willing to bet um, beer money that UNC Charlotte has a style guideline uh, for the way that their um, the way that campus publications are to be done, um, and and there will be differences between this one or that one. But going back to that question that I told you that I think really played a large part in me getting the job, I never worked with a military. Um, with, with a military contract and military publication. And so I didn't walk in knowing all of these specific rules for this, that, and the other. But what I did have was experience in taking copy, taking um, printed and, and written data and editing it to meet certain criteria. And so Josh, I, I want to jump in real quick because yeah, we're getting ahead, close Jake. on time here. Uh, excellent yeah. stuff. I want to make sure students have time for questions. So yeah, if you have yeah, questions, yeah, I was wrapping it up, but go yeah, right ahead. Yeah. Man. Go ahead and uh, unmute yourselves if you have questions, y'all, or put them in the chat, and uh, we'll get to them for Josh here. Yeah, yeah, fire away. Don't everybody go at once, but but wrapping that up, you know, there are a lot of different, you know. Um, again, you know, I've talked about this from a big tech, military, um, uh, Boeing commercial, but there's so much more than that. You know, um, <clears throat> think about just, just opportunities that you can look for there um, quickly. <clears throat> you know, some of you may attend church, some of you may not, but if you do, there's a church bulletin every week. How many times have you re looked at it and seen, you know, copy editing errors or misspellings or mistakes, um, different uh, charitable organizations. You know, like I said, I did an internship at the Chamber of Commerce. Um, you know, Charlotte, you guys are, you know, seat of government. You know, again, whether or not you want to work for the government, you're going to be dealing with them for the rest of your life, learning from them. Um, again, different nonprofit organizations, be they, you know, within the arts world or within um, any number of, of, of different outfits. You can go and right now, while you're finishing your degree, work in areas that interest you as a volunteer or intern and ply your trade. And these are things that you can both, to wrap this all up, some of these things are things you can put directly on your resume, which is great, or some of it will be ways that you can answer a question in an interview when they're asking you, you know, how would you approach a situation like this? Have you ever had to do anything like that? And, you know, you may not have ever done it for the kind of company that you're applying to work for, but you'll have done similar things. And so it's about those transferable skills and those kinds of experiences that can help you go from I'm fresh out of college and, you know, I waited tables or worked at Best Buy, not knocking any of that. I did a lot of those kinds of things. It's noble work and we all have to do what it takes to, you know, pay the bills and have some thrills. But how do I separate myself and take the experiences that I've had and use them to position me to get that first and second and third job going down the pike? That's great, Josh. Thank you for sharing all of that. You honestly answered all of my questions. <laughs> I told Josh before we started, I had a lot of questions, but you, you've you answered all of them. I, and I can reiterate, I mean, just those transferable skills, you know, you, you may not be like Josh wanting to, even Josh, I don't think you were wanting to stay in a particular company for 20 plus years. No. But, you know, going from one job to another is is just reality. A lot of students your age will will flip-flop jobs every couple of years. And so just knowing what you're good at, knowing how to transfer those skills to the next thing is so important. So thank you so much for talking a lot about that because I think sometimes we can just forget. I never thought I would be doing editing, reviewing, any of that kind of stuff, but that's a huge part of my job as well. I mean, I look at I look at resumes all day long and, and <laughs> it's just, I never thought about that being part of my job. 
until I got into this career. So some of those skills are just so important. So definitely hang on to them and find, you know, those opportunities where you can to continue to get better at reviewing and editing and providing feedback. I work with people now, you know, like I said, you know, the, the story that started, I talked to a friend that I hadn't talked to in, in 10 years and it started out him telling me, you know, <clears throat> when I first met him, he had no kids. Now his kids are in high school, um, you know, and I hadn't talked to him in any of that time. And so, <clears throat> but he had questions about things that we did way back when. I work with people now that I hadn't worked with in five or six years, but, you know, while we've all, you know, <clears throat> if you look at our resume and, and you're filling out the paperwork, it says we've all worked at Boeing since, you know, 2007, 2003, whatever. You know, it's a big company. Even here in Huntsville, we're on multiple sites and multiple programs. I got people that, you know, I hadn't seen him or her in years. And now they're working with me and folks that are leaving now, you know, there's no telling I'll, I'll bump back into them. Um, I have one friend who has left Boeing at least twice, gone to work somewhere else, you know, moved back in. And so again, you know, those kinds of, you know, the skill set, even if, you know, the policies and procedures may change the, you know, the people that you're talking to at lunch may change, but, those kinds of editing and, and finding different kinds of editing. Um, and like I said, you know, I don't get to do a lot of writing and personally, I kind of love writing. I, I wish I got to do a little bit more of that. I don't, um, I've done some freelance work and, and, and gotten to do some, some fun and, and cool things with that. Met some people through that world. Um, but like I said, you know, while mine has been in the big tech world, you know, I got friends who, you know, are doing it in the tourism and, and hospitality world, uh, the nonprofit sector, you know, healthcare, um, other associated things. There's a need for editing wherever. And, you know, sometimes, and, and, and I say this, and this isn't great, you know, it's true what I told you that I've gotten, you know, just within the last week. Um, job opening notifications. One of the things is, you know, part of the reason I'm not still on space station, even though it's still orbiting as we speak, <clears throat> the budget for it has decreased every year since I got there. I was working in the software organization. Software is the most important product that they provide. Documentation was contractually required and they're still producing it. But at a certain point, you know, they can only cut so many software engineers before, you know, they can't make the software anymore. So sometimes the person who's going to get put into play is going to be, you know, the, the, the tech writer, the tech editor, the book boss, tech publisher, all sorts of different um, <clears throat> names and titles that, that come with it. They didn't have budget for me but a different program did. And I had to learn to speak a different kind of acronym soup. Um, the number of acronyms, you know, I used to do a document that was called uh, a software test description, the acronym STD. I didn't want to, when I was in college, I STD meant something very different. I did not intend to walk around with people asking me, um, How's your, how's, how, how's this STD coming? Whoa, that's kind of personal, man. What are you asking me that for? <clears throat> you will learn to speak in any number of different languages and um, <clears throat> acronyms and all of that <clears throat> can change. But again, the skills of, of editing and collaboration of teamwork, you know, <clears throat> For me personally in college, I hated when I'd get group assignments. I'm like, just tell me what you want me to do. I'll go do it. Give me my grade. I understand why it happens because very little of what I do 
<clears throat> is something where they can just assign it to me and I can take it from the beginning to the end. <clears throat> I'm going to be coordinating and collaborating with a lot of other people. And so there again, that's another you know, skill set, sometimes a necessary evil, but that's, that, that, that's part of it. Wow, Josh, thank you so much. Such good information. Do we have any final questions before we wrap up here? I want to make sure. Uh, let's see, Shanice in the chat says, uh, you mentioned volunteer experiences being valuable. What are some volunteer opportunities that could be transferable? Absolutely. I'll, I'll, I'll try, and, um, try and do this quickly because I know we're getting to the end, but, but to pay attention to that. Um, you know, I mentioned a friend who works in you know, the um, healthcare nonprofit. There are grant proposals and, you know, some of those are, you know, every bit as technical as, um, you know, a high tech contract. Um, you know, again, you know, you're talking about different passions and I don't want to include or exclude anything, but, you know, whether they be for arts organizations and humanities, whether they be for, um, religious organizations, uh, social justice, or, or even, you know, dare I say, you know, political organizations that might match your, your particular interests. <clears throat> Most of them, they're sending out communication daily, whether it's on social media, you know, Facebook, Twitter, et cetera, or, you know, email blasts. You know, you think about the number of emails you get, the ones you read, the ones you delete. <clears throat> A lot of great organizations that are doing phenomenal work are trying to reach. <clears throat> they're trying to keep their own, uh, their own donors, their own um, interested parties connected to them, trying to reach new people. And so, you know, I can't necessarily tell you, you know, go to the um, the Humane Society or go to, um, you know, the AARP or whatnot, but. These organizations are all trying to communicate with their constituencies or, or potential constituencies. And all of that work, it needs to be edited and it gives you the opportunity, whether it's through volunteer or an internship, to work with them. And, you know, the cool thing is, is it can fuel some of your passions, some of the interests that you've got and give you actual practical experience of writing, editing, and they're going to have their own standards. And again, you know, some of them, they'll adopt standards that are widespread, you know, whether it's, you know, AP or MLA or, or any of those, but it gives you an opportunity to work with an organization that might align with some of your interests and passion and get some of that, um, and, and, and get some of that experience. And it may not be anything that you get paid for, but you can do some work that's meaningful to you and actually put it on your resume and say, you know, I've done editing for this organization and I've written copy and, and those kinds of things. So it's out there. And that's one of the things that I think is really an advantage for you guys there in Charlotte, where it's such a large area and so many different kinds of for-profit, non-profit, companies and organizations in every imaginable field are right there in, you know, are, are, are right there in your backyard. And so, yeah, there's so many volunteer opportunities and, and look for those and reach out to them. And they've got people that are looking for you. Such great advice. Did that answer your question, Shanice? Awesome. All right. Well, with that, I just wanted to say thank you to Josh again. Um, this has been such a thorough look at technical writing. Can we give uh, Josh a virtual round of applause? <laughs> uh, thank so you weird. all so much. It was a real <laughs> pleasure to be here, friends. I appreciate that so but much. But you know, yeah, I, I've, I've got, it's funny how we've gotten into the virtual thing. Maybe someday we can get you up on campus at some point, but so it thankful. It would be my pleasure. I would love that. Even from another state, we get to hear about what you've been doing at Boeing and just such great information. I put um, Josh's LinkedIn information into the chat, so feel free to connect with him. 
Um, if you have follow-up questions and just for a, another type of peer, um, if you wanted to go into the technical writing field. And of course, myself and my colleague, AJ Simmons, are here to talk with you if you do want to talk more about uh, internships, volunteering, how to get your foot in the door of technical writing. We're here for you as well. But thank you so much for being here today. And I'll just hang on the line just in case people do have extra questions. Um, but thank you all so much. And we'll see you for our next meetup coming up. Thank you, everyone. It was a pleasure to be here.